Hello guys, thanks for stopping by. Now we will be continuing my series of me simping for the game known as Black Ops 1, specifically zombies. And this time it will be about this map that started Easter Egg Quest and for all we know, jump started the hype train that was known as Easter Eggs. Specifically Easter Egg steps that progressed the map's story that would normally end in the conclusion and reward by the end of it all. I also want to dive into the atmosphere this map brought us as the first DLC map for this game and what cool stuff it brought to the table in this and in general how much fun this map brought us let's dig in shall we Security protocol 13255 received. Performing integrity check. Awaiting launch initiation. Warning. Launch in progress. Five. Four. Three. Two. One. Hmm. Alright. I want to create a fixed list of things. I would like to talk about when it comes to talking about these maps from now on. I'll be rating them from 1 through 5 Jugnogs, and I'll be telling you the reasoning behind these ratings as well. Now the list I will be rating these maps with will be as follows. Number 1, Atmosphere. Number 2, Gameplay. And number 3, What's New. And lastly, All Together. Pretty much the conclusion of it all. This would be a list I'll be going with but if you might have some suggestions for me, let me know in the comments. But as for right now, let's get into number one. Number one, the atmosphere. I feel like in Zombies, the atmosphere is something we all the players notice, but yet don't talk about when it comes all around to it. We mainly just feel and not dwell on that subject for too long. But in this case, that map's atmosphere is perfect for what it's trying to convey. And that is an abandoned Soviet cosmodrome in which our players travel using a lunar lander and once I say you once you land I gotta say it's pretty creepy and the fact that it takes away all the color as soon as you spawn in and the only way to get it back is to turn on the power the vibes it gives is more like you're lost in a location that's run down and frankly pretty messed up probably from the zombie invasion might I mention this map's color scheme works amazing with all the locations of this map shows you and especially as soon as you turn on the power and get color, it's pretty unique in that regard. It's a map that won't be afraid in showing you how bad the zombie infestation got. And with all the blood splattered everywhere and all the broken debris, I wish you the best getting out of this map alive. The atmosphere overall is amazing and won't beat around the bush since it accomplished what it was trying to do and that is scare you. So. I will admit, sometimes the black and white would get annoying for a while, but it was something nice and new. So I'd give it a 4 out of 5 just for all the effort they went for when it came to, you know, scaring you and the atmosphere being just pretty, pretty good. Not perfect, but pretty good. Mainly the reason I gave it a 4 instead of a 5 is because sometimes the color scheme could get a little boring, especially since it's your, it's more than your first time playing it. It just could get a little boring over time and you know you can't blame it for that but it's first impressions were perfect so I'll give it a four number two gameplay what can I say the gameplay plays beautifully in Black Ops 1 but what about the challenges this map puts you through as you spawn in well it starts off in black and white obviously which probably confused some players thinking their TV might have been broken somewhat but no the game intentionally takes away all your color so you go out of your way to find the power Honestly though, the black and white aesthetic helped with the game's introduction and the gameplay because of how it conveys the map. It's showing a broken down Soviet cosmodrome and it's being creepy in doing it by taking away the colors and it's even more eerie with the colors on. Honestly it's mostly awesome how it does this and I'll give it that. Other than the color changing, I'll say the map allows you to explore through its tight spaces and very little open spaces. But thanks to that, it always gives a scary idea to traverse the map without having some good weapons on you, since you get could get cornered at any moment through the map. And because of how cool this map presented itself, I'd give it a 3 out of 5. I might have gave it some praise, but this map had its fair share of troubling areas, mainly because you hardly have any open areas to kill zombies. I don't mind narrow spaces in zombies maps, but this one had me at least staying in one spot for most of the game to survive. 
But overall, the beginning of the early rounds, it was great. Number three, what's new? I like to say this kind of ties in with the gameplay since the map introduced some cool new things to zombies, especially a new means of transportation. The Lunar Landers. This would help the players traverse the map so you didn't have to use your legs all the damn time to get somewhere. Which was nice, and oh man, did I mention the rocket you could launch as soon as you used the Lunar Landers from all their respective spots? You could finally launch the rocket. And guess what? You can blow it up too. It takes a ton of bullets to just blow it up, but or you can just use the ray gun, you know, just to make it easier. And speaking of wonder weapons, this map introduced us to two iconic wonder weapons, kind of, more like equipment. But pretty much what I'm talking about is the Gersh device and the Maskrushka dolls. These had their own respective fun to be had with, but the Gersh was the most memorable one in my opinion. Being able to teleport somewhere random while in trouble is very nice. And also very fun seeing where you end up just by jumping in. But the dolls were just a funny, like, little addition, in my opinion. Just have little, little mini characters of our, you know, characters. On that note, the main wonder weapon for the map was the Thunder Gun. Again. So, no new wonder weapon guns, sadly. But at least, hey, they brought us monkeys. Oh yeah, these monkey rounds were always just the uh, They take your perks away! Oh man, I freaking hate these little guys. Since they ruin your strategy and take away all your perks in the process, which freaking sucks, especially on solo since you mainly want to protect Quick Revive and Jug, so you just end up having to rebuy the perks you lost. But at least they gave us a new melee weapon as well to make up for it, I guess. But this Bowie Knife reskin is freaking awesome. It's a freaking sickle, and honestly, it's the best upgrade we can get when it comes to killing zombies. Nothing more satisfying than using a sickle. Other than the weapons and features, we also got the birth to one of the best perks in zombies ever, PhD Flopper. And also Stamina. Up. These awesome perks changed the way people played the game and honestly for what they were, they offered freaking amazing advantages. Such as PhD being given the ability to be immune to explosions and being able to belly flop and cause an explosion. Stamina up, making you faster and being able to run for longer. This map gave a ton just for being the first DLC map and it impacted zombies in a way where it was fun and made us look forward to seeing what else they would give us down the road. And what can I just say that the freaking easter egg song is one of the my personal favorites in my opinion. It captures the best era of zombies including 115. And let's not forget the new easter egg quest that started the awesome quest side of zombies that we know today. It was a basic easter egg in which you just have to free Dr. Gersh from, I believe, uh, 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 yeah, no, I'm messing with you. I'm repairing the mechanism and freeing Gersh. As I'm editing this video, I just noticed that I didn't even give an overall rating for what's new. And, well, obviously I'm going to give it a 5 out of 5. I just ended up rambling too much and couldn't, you know, remember that, you know, I had to rate that part. But for the most part... It got out of 5 out of 5 out of me because it just, it just introduced so much new stuff that, well, you know, you just can't really argue with all the new stuff that they gave you. You know, even if they didn't give you a new Wonder Weapon, they still gave you a bunch of fun stuff to do. And, well, it was just packed with content. And it was just a bunch of new stuff that, well, made us happy. And that's why I'll give it a 5 out of 5. Overall, all together, I feel like this map did pretty well and amazing. I'd say overall this map is a 4 out of 5. It did well and amazing when it came to all these criterias. It literally gave us more than we asked for and for the most part new perks, new weapons, new fun gimmicks. I, I don't know what to say other than you know this map is just great. For what it was for the first DLC map it did amazing. It made us look forward to the next DLC maps and honestly it, it, it was just amazing and came to that stuff, especially being the stepping stone for Easter egg steps and, you know, having like a story going on within the map. That was pretty awesome. I feel like if it wasn't going to be this map, another map was going to do it, but I'm glad it was Ascension that did it because, well, you know, you got to start somewhere and this map did everything well. Gameplay, story, and, you know, well, starting off the zombie storyline, uh, I feel, for the most part. And... Well, it did pretty well, and 
I'd say that's the reason why I'd give it a 4 out of 5. It was almost perfect, but you know, no map is ever perfect. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll do my best to make another video when it comes to Call of the Dead, but I'll see about that. I feel like a new project will be just for Call of Duty multiplayer. I want to talk more about that because, well, Black Ops 1 had a pretty nice multiplayer. And, well, tell me what you think in the comments. What should I be working on and what you guys think I should be doing? And, well, thanks for watching. Um, subscribe if you haven't. If you don't want to, then that's fine. But for the most part, thanks for listening. And if you got to this point, thank you very much. Until next time, see ya.